Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing about parallel connected capacitors and also we'll be solving uh, example problems on this topic. So, the first thing we'll do now is to create or to sketch uh, capacitors connected in parallel. Okay, so for example, we have three capacitors connected in, in parallel. have this one a little bit further because we will be putting some variables in them okay okay we'll, put, we'll be putting our source here Then we'll have the variable. This is our E. We have here our C1, our C2, and C3. Then we will have the, fl the flow movement of charge. So this will be the Q1. This will be our Q2 and this will be our Q3 okay then we will have the total charge which is QT okay so I believe this is uh, we have the charge at the branches in reverse so we will have that one in the uniform subscript okay so this will be q1 this will be q3 okay so we will have also our voltages here this is our e1 this will be our e2 and this will be our E3. So the principle of or the one of the characteristics or properties of a parallel circuit is that the voltage of the source is equal to the voltage at the branches. So that is still applicable even if that is the is it is the devices or the uh, the one that is connected in parallel is either a resistor or a capacitor. That property is still uh, advisable or still applicable. So we have our voltage at the source is equal to the voltage at the capacitor C1, E sub 1, then we have E sub 2, the voltage at capacitor C2, and E sub 3, the voltage at capacitor C3. Then same, the flow of charge, we will have this one analogous to the flow of current, so the total the total charge flowing in the circuit is equal to the sum of the charges flowing in the individual branches. So we have Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Okay. Then we'll have now the the value of the total capacitance so the the ana the the similar um, this the similarity of this parallel connected capacitor it is similar to series connected resistor so in series connected resistor if we are going to review that one so the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistances on each branch so that is the formula now if you are going to have this one because this formula is similar to the formula for parallel connected capacitor so this is for series connected capacitor 
then we could say that the total capacitance of the circuit is equal to the sum of the individual capacitance of each branches. So that is C1 plus C2 plus C3. And that is the three formulas that we are going to be familiarized with in order for us to solve problems involving parallel connected capacitors. Okay? To understand better the formula, we will answer an example problem. So we have three capacitors with capacitance of 15, uh, 10, 15, and 20 microfarad respectively are connected in parallel. So find the total capacitance and the total charge in the circuit if the combination is being supplied by a 200 volt source. Okay, so we'll write our now solution. So the very first thing to do is for us to write our equivalent circuit. So we will have that one in well, this is purple. Okay. So we have here our source. And we have three branches. So three. I almost uh, wrote a resistor or draw a resistor. So capacitor. So three capacitors. Okay, two, and we have this one, three, so they are connected in parallel, so let's just erase first this one. So, we we'll now write the values. So, this is the source is 200 volts. Okay, 200 volts. Our C1, so the first capacitor C1 is 10 microfarad. And our C2 is 15 microfarad. And our C3 is 20 microfarad. Okay. Then we have the individual uh, charge the value of charge in every branches so this will be q3 this will be q2 this will be q1 then we have Total charge here. This will be our QT. Then we have also the individual um, voltages. Okay, so here we have our P1. We have our E2. So there's no more uh, space there, so we just write E3 in here. But that is the voltage on our capacitor C3. So the problem requires us to solve for the... First, we are going to solve for the total charge. So QT. And also for the total capacitance, which is our C3. Okay? So we will be solving that one. So the very first thing to do is to know which of the required is the most um, easy, the most convenient to solve. And 
by inspection, we can not we notice that the total capacitance is the most convenient to solve first because we could use the total capacitance in solving the total charge. Okay, so let's solve first the total capacitance. So our total capacitance is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. This is equal to 10 microfarad plus 15 microfarad plus 20 microfarad so we have this is our total capacitance so let's use our calculator 10 microfarad plus 15 microfarad plus 20 microfarad and this is equivalent to 4, 4, 45 so let's have that one here. 45 microfarad so we have 45 microfarad then we will solve for the total charge okay so if you are going to go back to the previous topic so the total capacitance okay so let's have this one on the let's raise this one so that we could write at the bottom so the total capacitance is equal to the total charge over the voltage source okay so if we're going to solve for the total charge so we just manipulate the equation we transfer the voltage the e in this part of the equation the or in the left side of the equation so we could write that as ct times e is equal to qt we could change places the equation so it could it would be the same so qt is equal to e times ct okay so substituting so our e is 200 volts times our CT is 45 microfarad and using our calculator so we have 200 times 45 microfarad so our total charge is so that is 10 to the power of negative 3 so 9 times 10 to the power of negative 3 and 10 to the power of negative 3 is milli so our answer will be so qt is equal to 9 milli and the unit for charge is column so our answer is 9 milli column and there you go we have managed to solve for the total capacitance which is 45 microfarad and the total charge which is 9 milli column